Okay, so we're coming back into the summer months again, and if you're in the northern latitudes, then uh, you'll start to see the summer triangle. Um, and although I've chopped it off at the bottom there, uh, what you'll see is, is these three stars, and one down the bottom there. This is Vega, and uh, midsummer evenings, you'll find this uh, in the east. When I say midsummer, so it's end of May, beginning of June here and this is just past east. Uh, here we have Deneb, this is the uh, tail end of the swan and right down the bottom only just rising at uh, 10 or 11 p.m. in latitudes of about 45 north you've got Altair and uh, yeah they make up the, th the three stars of the summer triangle. So um, if we look start off and use Vega as our, our first point and uh, it's a nice bright star, in fact it's a hugely bright star as you can see up here, it's a zero magnitude star. Um, so that's Alpha Lyra and uh, a great starting point for us. If we come down you'll see the harp shape, these four stars, and our first target is going to be that one there, uh, because that's a double star, in fact that's called a double double, Eta Lyra. And uh, if you look through it in binoculars, you'll probably resolve it into two stars. If you look through it in a four-inch scope, you may just be able to resolve it into four stars. Give it a go. Well worth a try. So, while we're in that region, we can also take a look at M57, which is the Ring Nebula. Now, this is all pretty easy with the, the scope, because what we're going to do is, basically, we, once we find Lyra, that's well within the field of view if we, of the, the finder scope. And the same thing goes here. So what we're basically looking at is everything in that field of view. M57 is pretty much in the middle between uh, these two stars here. At the bottom of the, uh, uh, of the harp. And uh, it's a ring nebula. Uh, small but perfectly formed. So and, and looking at it through a, a reasonable sized telescope, you'll, you'll even be able to pick up a little bit of color. But if you get to image it, then uh, yeah, you'll, you'll have a, a nice result. Here's mine. Okay, so moving over a bit, we can look at Cygnus the Swan. Um, and I would suggest that we start straight with this one. This is uh, Beta Cygni. It's also known as Albiro, and it's a double star. And it is a beautiful double star because of the two colors. And you'll see them as a blue and a gold, or, uh, yeah, people see them in different colors, depending on your eyesight. Um, but well worth a look. And to get to it, okay, you could you could basically just draw draw a line, and you'll find that it's, yeah, well, from, from Vega, it's about 15 degrees. So you'll see on here my little symbol. So that's uh, yeah, the distance between those two. Um, but to be honest, if you can see Vega, you can probably make out Deneb, and then these three going across, which are the wings of the swan. This is the, the back end, and this is the head of the swan. So Albiro is the head of the swan. Well worth a look, especially in a small telescope or binoculars. So if you, if you follow it back along, um, then this region around here, this, this star is called Sada, S-A-D-R. Um, it's an interesting star all on its own, but there's lots of nebulosity around there. You'll need fairly dark skies to see it, but this region of the sky, maybe you can see on my map, this white area, this is the Milky Way. So depending on how dark your skies are, you should be able to see at least something of a, uh, a cloudy, slightly cloudy patch. Uh, if, you, uh, if you've got really dark skies, then you'll start to see some of these um, shapes taking, th these sort of inlets taking shape, uh, which is great, quite honestly. So there are plenty of targets in this region. Um, if we start off with Deneb, just to the south we have these two here, and this is the North American Nebula and the Pelican Nebula, NGC 7000, and uh, well worth a look. Not so easy to see visually um, because it's spread over quite a large area and it's also um, strong in the hydrogen alpha emission, so it's an emission nebula. 
So you could do with a red filter on there or something like that to help, um, to help bring it out. Uh, and to find it, yes, okay, and the direction is the key thing here because it's, obviously it's within our five degree of a finder scope. Um, but we basically want to follow the parallel of the three stars underneath and we'll get to it and then just come up a little bit. So instead of just being exactly parallel, we're going to take it round to say four o'clock or something like that. And that should center it up in our finder scope. Doubt very much you'll see much there, although you will be able to see these stars. They form quite a nice little pattern, this one, two, three, four, five, um, plus this bright one over here. So if you can, if you can sign, find those, you're, you know you're in the right area. And then look through your main scope with a reasonably wide um, angle uh, eyepiece. I would suggest 25 mil or something like that. And you should see the North American just about. Um, we can also come down here, and this is a very famous um, photographic target, and this is the Veil Nebula. This is actually a supernova remnant as well. You can kind of see the slight circularity to it, um, but it's a very old one, so it's well, well spread out, and you can see that uh, yeah, it covers a good three degrees anyway overall so it's difficult to image in in a, a large telescope but a, a short um, short focal length telescope such as uh, 400 mil 350 something like that you can get it all in difficult to see once again it's a much better photographic target than it is um, an observable target but you should just about be able to make out some some uh, nebulosity uh, in the regions and to get to that well, to be honest, this is, is what you're looking for is between these two stars. So you can find these easy enough. This one's a, sometimes a bit of a challenge, but just you, you'll make it out. It's the next brightest star. Um, and then what we're looking for is this little right angle triangle. So you'll see this is 50 second Cygni. And that's actually the bright star in the Western um, Veil Nebula. So once you've got onto that, yeah, you'll see you'll, you're basically you're well within the field. So if you're in the middle, you can move across a bit and you're well within the field of view. Same deal. You, need to, you can move down and also across a bit. So go to two o'clock or something like that and you'll be right on target. Yeah, they're lovely photographic targets. I've had a good go at them as well, uh, although I'd love to spend more time on them. And that's my one of my targets for this year. So we've got one more I'd like to talk about, and it's once again, it's not a particularly easy one to see, but um, you'll see this little green square here, and that's NGC 6995, uh, and that's all call, also called the Crescent Nebula. So you can see it. Uh, once again, it's an emission, so yeah, you, you're, you, you need something to give you a bit more contrast than just standard um, clear filters. Um, some sort of nebula filter would be good on, on the eyepiece. Um, but actually, if you, as you can see, you know, it's, it's two and a half degrees down from SEDA. So if you, if you come and put SEDA on your, uh, onto your left hand side of the eyepiece, then your, uh, uh, sorry, finder scope, then you'll have the Crescent Nebula directly in the field of view. Also a great target for um, astrophotography. And in fact, I've just been imaging it the last few nights. So here's my picture of that.